this is H.C. Bailey, and Starkey likes doing headstands on his fishbowl, and let's play Chrono Cross! <laughs> yeah, I didn't even notice that before. Yeah. Thanks for letting me know about that. It makes him even more cuter than he already was. Okay, let's get going through the Dead Sea, finally. I know I've been promising to do that for like the last week or so, <laughs> but I kept on getting distracted by things. I promise, we're going to go all the way through to the end this time. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to, uh, well, I might backtrack a little bit, but not much. I mean, we're not going to be leaving the whole area and then going all the way through and stuff like that. So, let, let's actually go through to the end this time, move on with the plot for a change, and take on this new Gumby monster! It's like Gumby's gone mad! What are these guys, anyway? I, I don't think they ever explained that. But anyway, with the Dreamer's Scarf, I don't even have to build up my element power to cast Eagle Eye anymore. I can just cast it right off the bat. That's one reason why I really like, well, Starkey. I also like, uh, e that's one reason why I like the Dreamer's Scarf, because you can do that. But the other thing is that it's also more useful than you might think, because, I mean, you think, well, what's one element power? How big of a deal could that be? But, you know, it seems to help you keep pace in battle with your attacks a lot easier because, like, if you miss, let's say, let's say I didn't cast Eagle Eye and I actually missed or something like that, you know, you fail to build up your element power so it takes you longer. But that one little piece of element power seems to make a pretty big difference, actually. I mean, you wouldn't really think about it, but, you know, I, I never realized it, but I always found myself constantly, like, one short on element power. But with that Dreamer's Scarf, you know, it, it fills in the gap so you don't fall behind on there, so you can still keep just going all out. So yeah, it's pretty useful, not just for casting that first Eagle Eye there in like a random battle or something like that. But yeah, I don't think they ever explain those Gumby creatures. I mean, I think we eventually find out what they are, but why they look like that to us, I, I don't know. You got me on that one, viewers. If they do explain it, maybe just send me a private message, but don't spoil it in the comments section. But anyway, let's just go under here. Whoa. Let's see. Can I... Oh, there's a chest over there. Oh, right. I can't do that here. I gotta go down here first, get this chest. There we go. And we get the free fall element! And we go into free fall, apparently. Okay. Let's take this guy out. Where'd he go? I guess he didn't want to play. Okay, well that's everything I want to do with Starkey here. I just brought him along because, well, he, oh, there it is. Well, I'm gonna take care of this guy and bring someone else in to replace Starkey now. All right, I've decided to bring Janice into my party so that I can work on getting my red shiny materials in addition to the black and green ones, I've got everyone equipped with a summon on the lowest level possible. Yeah, this is a very excellent place to farm some shiny materials. Obviously, I've already done blue earlier with frog prints, and we can't do anything with white or yellow yet. So, unfortunately, I really can't take advantage of the power of the plasma pistol if I'm going to be farming shiny materials here. Oh, Robo Ducky! Well, let's get... Eagle Eye going on Janice there. You can use whoever you want. I suppose Lynx would be more appropriate, but I can't Eagle Eye himself and do that in the same round. Rabbit season! Duck season! Rabbit season! Duck season! Uh, let's use... Yeah, let's use her level 5 tech. Why not? I'm not going to bother casting a summon with one enemy. Besides, I probably wouldn't get it off correctly. She uses... Carrots as missiles to kill the enemy. <laughs> yeah, I am surprised that so many of you know about Looney Tunes and Bugs Bunny and everything. I, I thought they, like, stopped showing that on TVs, like, in the 80s or something like that. But, uh, well, I apparently I was wrong. And, well, I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm, I'm glad you viewers know about Looney Tunes and some of the cartoons that even I grew up with makes me feel not so old. I mean, I know I'm old, but still. makes me feel better. 
It's a pretty weird place. What are we doing here, anyway? I, I mean, I know Lynx stole my body and everything, and he said, come to the Sea of Eden, and I think uh, Mom said something about uh, the Dead Sea used to, being, used to be called the Sea of Eden, or something like that. But I mean, when we find Lynx, are we gonna find him and get Surge back? Or are we gonna find him and kill him? I mean, I don't know what the plan is here. Well, in this chest, we get a resistance belt. We're in some sort of city ruins or something like that. I think that's technically what this part of the Dead Sea is called. Well, Janice is pretty useful. She's got decent stats. And besides, I mean, who doesn't like Janice? I mean, she's kind of hot, I guess, if you don't mind the rabbit ears. Let's see. Yes, there it is, an earring of light. Not that I care about it, but it's kind of hidden there. Huh, there's a strange looking device here. What is that? Yeah, yeah, Norris comes along here regardless of whether you uh, have him in your party or not. You know anything about this strange contraption? Huh. Oh, of course! A guy in the military has knowledge of electro... Electrical engineering! Why not? Let's see what we can bring up here. Kinda looks a little familiar. Hmm. Well, I guess Luca had knowledge of electrical engineering, so why not Norris? I remember when I saw Bavos' name there for the first time, I think my heart skipped a beat when I first saw that. It, it was like that one scene in Robocop, like, hey, I know you, you're dead! We killed you! We killed you! What's he doing back? Well, I'm sure that's nothing important. So, okay. Well, yeah, I just wanted to show you that little piece of information that they're just dangling right in front of you. You like, yeah? You like it? Huh? They're just like torturing you, like just giving you just enough information to keep your interest, but not so much that they're giving the plot away yet. So, I kind of like it. Yeah, let's take care of all these losers off-screen this time. Okay, I think that's... Well, most of them. There's another duck up there, but... Whatever. I killed all the ones down here. I think this is the only snow area of the game, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, I suppose this is sort of a tropical island theme that they got going for this game, so... I suppose I'll cut up some slack, but... I mean, isn't that like rule number three or four of RPGs or something like that? Every RPG has to have a snow area. And a desert area, a lava area, a future area, you know, sort of area. You know, I mean, every RPG has to have one. It's the rule. That, that's how the game works. I don't know. Apparently, they decided to almost forego that for the game. I like how they did that in Final Fantasy VII, at least, you know, I mean, they had a whole continent for a snow area. I mean, that was like, what, three or four areas you went to? That was awesome. I like that. So anyway, we got some new enemies here. Gremlins. They are green. Now, the nice thing about these guys is that it's very easy for you to set up your summon, or the green summon. So this would be a very excellent opportunity to work on that. And these guys will practically set up the element field for you, if I don't do that first. Well, there we go. Got it. And part of the reason why I have my summons allocated as low as possible is so that, well, they're easier to cast. Because you got to be able to cast them as quickly as possible before the element field might get broken up. 
And it'll deal more than enough damage to kill them anyway. So apparently Sonya is some kind of butterfly fairy thing. Kind of reminds me of the fairies in Ocarina of Time. What did they do to the fairies in that game? It's like they took the cute, innocent little fairies from the previous Zelda games and then turned them into some kind of bad stripper or something like that. I, I guess it works, but I mean, what they do to the artwork? I mean, it's crazy. But anyway, in this chest, we get an anti-green element. I don't really care for the anti-color elements, really. Yeah, if you like them, let me know, viewers. So what is this place, anyway? I mean, it seems like some kind of ruin from the future. But how could an entire city have been thrown back here? What happened? Is Lavos back to destroy the world again? Find out next time on Let's Play Chrono Cross! This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.